and I they're like, what happened to her? And I say, it was probably the shots, right? Uh, and they put me in handcuffs <gasps> instantly. Oh, instantly. no. What's up, Nomads? Welcome to your new favorite travel podcast, Two Beers Till Takeoff, the podcast that delivers expert knowledge, the information you won't get in your guidebooks, and a story that's guaranteed to make you say, what the fuck, or your money back. B, you know our episodes are free, right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Two Beers Till Takeoff. My name is Phil and I'm joined by my co-host Brandon. What is going on, buddy? What's up? How you doing? What's going on? Hey man, you know, living a good life. Look good life. Ready to take another trip. I know that. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing a country that was once considered one of the world's most dangerous, Colombia. Our guest today has been living in Colombia for the past six months and he's here to help us demystify this country. You may have already seen him on TikTok where he has grown his account to 130,000 followers and over 4 million likes. Is that good? Is that good? I don't know. Is that good? Welcome to the show, Austin, aka Digital Bromad. What's going on, buddy? Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah, man. So we're, we're, we're just glad you could come on, man. You, you've got some great content and people should definitely check out your TikTok account. So just before we get going, so let's just set the stage for the listeners. So as I said, Austin, you're currently living in Medellin, Colombia. It's not Medellin. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Brandon, Brandon's been to Colombia. Is it two times, Brandon? I've been twice, yeah. So having said that, in your opinion, Brandon and Austin, is Colombia a dangerous country? I'll let you go first, Austin. Okay, I... I'm actually, yeah, Medellin's the city where Pablo Escobar was mm -hmm. and where he's like raised. So there are, there's a lot of scars in the city from that time. And I think people are really, they don't want to see it go back to that. So it, they're just doing everything they can, they can to make it as safe as possible. And although there are some dangerous things that go on in the city still, I think it's important to realize that tourists are almost a protected class in a lot oh, of like really? the organized crimes eyes because they just don't want eyes on them. Mm. They just want to sell their drugs, do their thing. So if they start messing with tourists, the government's going to get pissed because it's taking away all the tourism money. And it's just, it's big news stories. So things right. are safe out here. It's a lot safer than people think. Yeah, most definitely. And I think worldwide, most cities will have a, a level of danger that just kind of comes with being in a big city. And I found the, the, the same with Medellin. So if you already kind of come from a big city with an inner city that you have to be on your wits end about things on your P's and Q's like that, that the same type of energy applies that I found when I was in Medellin and in other parts of uh, Colombia. Okay. Yeah. And I guess if you're so, so, so what you're saying to the people is it's not the eighties. Pablo Escobar's ghost is not going to come down and rob you. <laughs> You're good to go. You can have your phone out. So in terms of, of crime, is crime still something that's happening? And is, is, it, is it happening? Like, yeah, can, can you just describe the crime situation in Medellin? Sure, I, I'll, I'll go first on this again. I guess it's right out here, actually. That's Medellin right behind me. And I'm staying in Poblado, which is one of the like touristy areas. So just like what Brandon was saying with big cities, there's parts of town you probably shouldn't go to and just be walking around at night by yourself. You know what I mean? But yep. if you stay in Poblado or like the nice areas, there's police everywhere. I have a ton of friends out here. I haven't heard one story of them getting robbed. I've been here three months. You know, it's it's safe. It's I mean, it, it's like any other big city. There's parts that aren't. But for the most part, crime is against tourists, at least, is not that high. Right. I, I was staying close to the Poblado area. Um I guess this, the hostel that I was in is considered in the Poblado area, but it was a few blocks away from like where all the bars and stuff are. And I actually did hear of some people getting robbed, um, like on their walk from the bars to like the more residential areas. Um, and the only other, so that like just getting like robbed on the street were some of the stories that I heard from like firsthand experience. Um, the, uh, the only other crime that I had heard about was more secondhand experience um, where 
women will be robbing guys like they'll meet them on <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> And, and watch out watch out Austin <laughs> it end up getting like robbed and I saw there was, there was this other thing I had heard about some type of like aerosol spray that women were using to spray in these guys uh, faces to make them like I don't know like how to explain it but like a love potion number nine type of thing so it was like a it would make them more uh, open to doing things that were like if a, if the girl was like, okay, we're gonna go take money out of your ATM right now, man, we're, I've heard of that. Man, yeah. that's like it's like the devil's breath or something, something like that. Something like that. But I, like like I said, it was secondhand. Um, it wasn't like the, when I heard about it, it was a friend telling me that they heard about it from a friend. So I don't know how true that shit is. Because like, how I don't I don't believe that I, I'm gonna sp- smell something that's gonna make me want to go and take out two thousand dollars out of my out of my bank account for a girl like. <laughs> You're not that yeah. cute, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know how true that shit is, but yeah. I've heard of that too. I've heard of that too. That seems like something the CIA would have <laughs> right. before the Colombian women would have, right? Like, <laughs> the CIA so spent too much know. time in Colombia. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there's that story about Obama's Secret Service getting in trouble out here. Really? What did they do? They, they hit up a strip club in Cartagena and they like <laughs> tore that place down and got in trouble like the like. Someone was not paying girls, and like so, the girls are fighting the Secret Service, and then the dudes from the girls were like, "Yeah, well, I forget why Obama was out there, but he got no, down, they got in trouble." No way. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> but Austin, I, I have another question for you, man. So you and I think Brandon, you did uh, you did this as well, but it's it's a new trend that people are doing is is becoming a digital nomad, or in your case, a digital bromad. <laughs> Can you get, so for people that are listening that are maybe like you know what that's not something I could do. What are some tips and tricks maybe that you can share so that people can make that transition and enjoy the life that you're living? Yeah, that's a good question. I get asked a lot about how I got started, and I think I've explained my story enough to where sometimes people just try to copy that. But I meet people in sales. I meet people who are traders. I meet people who are programmers. I meet people who. Uh, have just started like an online business. Like there's so many different routes to getting this, but basically it is where you're getting paid USD and you're living in another country where it goes much further. So basically my standard of living is almost triple in Colombia, just because of how cheap things are. And I'm still getting those USD checks every month in the mail. And people are like, that sounds really complicated with taxes. And the cool thing is it's not, it's not at all. Like the tax system is so favorable for digital nomads in these countries. And, and, can you, so just for people who don't know the, I guess the the currency exchange for USD to Colombian is it pesos? Pesos, yeah. Like how much? I guess how much further your your dollar does go further, but like for example, how much is a beer? The important the important the important things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah beer's a dollar. Uh, so one you one dollar. I I usually round it to like four thousand Colombian pesos yeah. is one dollar. So wow. I can get like nice sushi delivered to my house for like six bucks. And then like, I'll take a girl out on a date to like a five-star hey, restaurant hey. and it feels like I'm taking her to like Red Robin <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so cheap. It's so nice. <laughs> hey, Austin, what did you think about, what do you think about the food in Colombia? I don't like Colombian food. Like the local Colombian stuff, I don't like it. Yeah. But in Medellin, such a big city, they have everything. Right. They have, you know, Thai, Mexican food. But like the traditional Colombian food, I, I wasn't messing around with. Yeah, that much. I, I walked away same. And the, a girl I was dating at the time that was traveling with me in December, she uh, had to basically we had we had the same. Uh, we didn't really like the food, and I, I don't. I w- that was surprising. I thought I was going to come to that country and love the food, but it it was kind of. Eh. I watched a couple of videos like just like on YouTube, just trying to see what their food is. Like I, I've never been like you guys know, it doesn't look appealing. I was like, it, if they're, if they're talking about it, that it, it's good. You know, there's like fried stuff, mm-hmm. there's seafood, which, you know, I, I think the seafood, it will be fine. But like it, some of it just didn't look appealing. Well, I mean, with Latin American food, it's kind of the same kind of across the board. You know what I'm saying? Or, of course, yeah. there's going to be variations in, the the seasonings or whatever like proteins that they use but a lot of it is just like rice beans you know barely any vegetable that was the thing especially coming from 
my privileged California living ass. I need vegetables. I need some greens and stuff. And there's not a lot of vegetables. That organic shit. Right, exactly. Um, so that was one of the major things, like a lot of fried foods and not a lot of vegetables, you know. So. Yeah. So, Austin, I know that you've been to Brazil. I've, I've done a, a bit of uh, time in Brazil as well. How would you compare the food Brazil versus Colombia? I personally liked Brazil's food better, but I was doing like the Brazil meats, like those. Yeah, uh, the Churrasco Rios. Buffet places. Yeah, yeah. Those were great. Those were, those were really good. But also a lot of meat, a lot of fried, a lot of meat, and not a lot of vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's kind of similar. It's kind of similar in that way. But uh, I definitely like Brazil more. <laughs> than than Colombia for sure. Brandon's right. It's a lot of just fried, so many carbs, no vegetables. Yeah, like that's all you but, got. So so is it is it just that the vegetables that are available are like you don't know what they are, or is it just that they're not part of the meals at all? Because I know in Brazil there was a shit ton of like just vegetables and fruits that I was like I've never like this is something from the Amazon. I've never even heard of this. <laughs> Yeah. No, I just didn't see them. They don't. They're not on the plate. Yeah, it's not a they're, lot of. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. There's sometimes, food. yeah. Of course, there's like a salad, but like, yeah, not not. It's not incorporated into the meal. Right. Q and A. All right, Austin. So we got this Q and A segment, and it's going to be some like quick fire questions that we're going to ask you, um, and it's really just to get to know you better. So first off. Would you rather hot or cold? Hot. Okay, that's my answer too. Beach or mountains? Beach. Okay. Bus or train? Train. Okay. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Oof, 100%. Oof, oof. I, li- I like this guy. I think I, I get four for four. I, I, right. I'd, I'd respond Just the same. Yes. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> the top or bottom bunk? Oh, I want to say I say top bunk for some reason, but I I know it's not the best one. (laughs) The the man likes to live in danger. Right. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite sports team? Denver Broncos. I was going to boo, but no. Did I lose you guys? Did I lose you guys? Man, man. you guys are set though this year, man. Russell Wilson, big Russ. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see if he's. If he's not too old. But, I mean, that hasn't stopped us in the past. We like old quarterbacks. Yeah, Brandon, Oakland doesn't have a team anymore. So yeah, no, don't worry. I'm not even a fan of the NFL at all anyway. <laughs> oh, Raiders? Yeah. I'm You're a Raiders bo- born, fan, and, born and raised in Oakland, so. But we don't have a team anymore, oh, so. Man. Well, you know what? Vegas loves them. Ah, wow. Yeah, you guys lost them. Wow. I don't even care. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, I don't even watch the NFL anymore. I don't even really fuck with it, so it, I don't even care. Yeah, I'm, I'm the NFL correspondent on the, on the podcast. <laughs> right. I'm a Patriots fan. Oh. Because oh, I like winning. You guys lost, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, I guess it's, it's my local team, okay? It's the closest you it's, got. It's like huh? eight hours away. Yeah, but no one feels sad for you guys. You guys want enough. Yeah. Like, you need to lose for like 50 years. Right, exactly. Fair you enough. guys got your Fair dynasty enough. Fair going. enough. All right, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Time travel or time manipulation. Okay. And where would you go? I would go all over the place, man. I go into the future, the past, pause, reverse. Like, I really want to see like some pyramid shit, like how the pyramids got built. Uh, Like, ancient, I'm I'm curious to see these ancient aliens. Like, (laughs) I was a pie and I would watch ancient aliens all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see some fucking UFOs. Right. But wait, yeah. wait, wait. But would you still take that superpower if it fucking butterfly butterfly affected? So if you screw up in the future in the past, uh, it can affect it. Yeah, man, I have to. I'll, I'll be I'll have infinite time to try to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't do what Ashton Kutcher did. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just recently watched that movie. It was so shitty, but good at the same time. It's <laughs> fucked, man. Yeah. That kills the dog. <laughs> In the director's cut, he he kills himself in the womb. Yeah, yeah. At the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See Bill Carter on himself. Yeah, Yeah, that's crazy. So crazy. All right, I got one more for you. That's not on our like list. Um, If you had to right now pick one country that you could move to, but you wouldn't not be able to travel anymore anywhere else, where would it be? Oh fuck! The top of mind is like Bali. 
because I've always wanted to go to Bali. But I haven't Indonesia. been there, so like the safe route, yeah. Oh yeah, Indonesia. Sorry. Yeah. The safe route would be Colombia, man, because I just know it here and I know it's sick. So, so it'd be a toss up, but like I think Colombia. So pick Colombia, but you would not be able to travel anymore anywhere else. You'd just be stuck in Colombia the rest of your life. Yeah, okay. I love it here, yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. I love Colombia. Good, good answer. Uh, over the U.S. <laughs> I'm excited now. Colombia's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> My family's going to be so pissed at me, man. My family's like, what the fuck? At the border, yeah. they're going to be like, uh, well, actually, your passport isn't valid right, anymore. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> I think I can convince my friends and family to come out and visit me. Oh, yeah, for sure. But. So, next question. What's something you never travel without? Uh, that's a, that's a lame answer. The first thing that came to my head is my cell phone. Okay. But actually, a probably more interesting one is I have an MPC. Uh, making beat. If you guys know what that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No? yeah, yeah. I machine. always bring it with me when I travel. That's lit. What's an MPC? Yeah, I got it right here. It's like a drum. Uh, I'll show it to you guys. A drum machine. Yeah, it's like a drum kit. You could like finger drum on it. This thing right here. Oh yeah, that's sick. Okay, fellow DJ. Yeah, sometimes you. Yeah, yeah. I usually, I mostly do like hip hop stuff, but I love like making beats for like some local who's just rapping in some language I don't know, and like or just music helps me connect with people. So it's nice to have something to play. How how long have you been doing music? Uh, I've been like I played piano when I was younger, and then I was like throughout high school trying to make beats so a while, but it's like not as much as I used to, but at least like ten years. Let me, yeah, I'll show you. If you don't like the music for your stuff, let me, uh, let me send right, you yeah, some yeah. ideas for like. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Please. That would be nice. That would be nice. All right. Next question. What is your favorite world attraction? World attraction. Like, um. Statue like, of Liberty would be one. Right, or or the, oh, the Jesus oh, statue okay, in the Brazil. Christ. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. That's the one. The uh, Redeemer. Christ the Redeemer. That was like a really special moment for me when I saw that. Really? What? Because what were... in God we trust is on your money. Is that why? Yeah. <laughs> I grew up Catholic, <laughs> so I'm less, I was there. Is that is uh, that the reason why? Like because you grew up Catholic or what, what was so special about it for you? I think that's definitely – I'm not Catholic anymore, but that was probably definitely like – it's always with me though. It's weird. I'm like not Catholic, but if uh, – if I found out a nuke was coming or something, like I, or if something really bad happens, I go straight into like Catholic mode for some reason, pray. like prayer mode. In case, but um, in when case, I saw, right? yeah, just in case, yeah, I'm like, why not? Can't Cover all bases. Um, but when I, <laughs> but uh, it, no, it's just where it's located is insane. It's like Brazil is the most beautiful. Rio was the most beautiful city I've ever seen. Like I love Medellin, but Rio just takes the cake. Right. It's gorgeous there, and you're up on top of this mountain. Lit, and I went super early in the morning, so it's like you got because uh, there's usually a big line, so it's just like me alone up there with it, and it was uh, it was just really special to me. Wow, something about it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm, Brazil's probably going to be my next big adventure, so um, I'm looking forward to to seeing that statue for sure because I've heard so many good things about it. You know. All right. Next question: Which con- which country is which country has the best cuisine? Mexico. Okay. I love Mexican food. Mexican there food we is the best. Yeah, tacos for life, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what was um what was like the best dish that that come to mind when you were in Mexico? Man, oh man, it sounds so but just like all the street tacos. Yeah. Like they're just cooked out with just so and what's really weird is the burgers there are great too. Mm-hmm. I was in Cancun and they do hamburgers. They cook it in lard. I'm sure it's horrible for, but they just, it's so <laughs> juicy and fatty and they put like a bologna slice on it and like 10 sauces it is the nice. best. Yeah. Speaking of food in Colombia, one of the things that uh, surprised me is how much they loved hot dogs out there. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. You know what? I'm realizing that now too. I'm like, it's like yeah, there's hot dogs everywhere. So many hot dog stands. It's probably so just many... cheap. Yeah, I think, I think it's just cheap and easy, but there's the like, cheap meat. there's like a, yeah. like, uh, fast food like little restaurants that that serve hot dogs all all over the place with those like uh, fried onions, mm, so good. Now I want a damn hot dog. Yeah, man, Brandon, Brand, I didn't even think about that. But that's so true. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. They love hot dogs out there. All right, uh, what is your biggest uh, travel pet peeve? Um, 
I don't like someone who uh, traveling with someone who's not going with the flow. Mm -hmm. Like yep. things are going to go wrong. You're going to be late. Like you just, I just hate like people with schedules. Like I'm always just, uh, just take it as it comes, you know? Right. Uh, tell us your best travel hack. Oh, I like to download, um, the location and the language on Google directly to your phone. Cause when you land, you're not going to have service. Right. So at the end of the day, like you'll always be able to go somewhere and ask someone a question. That's amazing. That's, awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. I I'm going to, I'm going to do that before I leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's uh, the most underrated country? Um, I really like, like Colombia is underrated just because people think it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so That's as far as what I've been to, like Colombia is super underrated. Good answer. Uh, where's somewhere you'd never go back? Denver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck Denver. I tell my friends to listen to this podcast. Fuck Colorado Springs. Uh, <laughs> I did not. Uh, you know, I would go back, but I had a bad experience in Costa Rica. I think it was really? just like expensive. It was so fucking expensive. Yeah. And you have to have a car to go anywhere. And it was just, I just, it's beautiful, but I kind of like I've already seen it. So I'm not going back. Gotcha. Right. I've heard that as well, like that everything's in USD and like sometimes even more expensive than you would pay in the US. I've heard this. Yeah, it's crazy. I've heard the same, I, but I still want to go and experience it because it just looks like it's going to tick off all Brandon's the adventure. Rich. Ah, it's gorgeous. not that. Don't uh, take that back. Uh, don't need, no need <laughs> nobody out there counting my pockets. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> where did you experience the least friendly locals? Um, I want to say Spain. Oh, really? Ooh. When I was out in Spain, uh, they just seemed a little bit... I think it's more they just don't like Americans as much. I was, I was, I was going to say there. it, but I was going to let you say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they just they didn't like me because I was American, probably. So they, were, they gave me like side eyes sometimes, I guess. Oh, wow. Remember, guys, you can, you can always claim that you're Canadian. <laughs> yeah, right? That's a, and I've heard Coloradans kind of sound like we're Canadian. <laughs> so. I, I've, count, I, I've caught a guy... I was like, oh, where are you from in Canada? He's like, oh, uh, Toronto. I was like, oh, yeah, what, like what, what part? He's like, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like, I'm from Buffalo, dude. That's horrible. I've, I've actually met, um, I've met two Americans abroad that when I first walked up to them and like introduced myself, said, what's up? They had a strong accent. Like a girl, one girl had a British accent. This other dude uh, sounded what, somewhat like Irish but they were both from America and were putting on fake accents to like fit Damn. in. Damn. Yeah, man. It was really fucking sad, actually. Because I've never experienced the like, oh, I'm American, so I'm getting treated differently. And it might be because I'm like, you know, not to make it about race, but it might be because I'm black. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why I haven't experienced it. But the t those two people were like putting on a, a, an accent so that they either could fit in with the people that they were with or so that they didn't get... I guess discriminated against because they are American. I thought that shit was sad. Oh, that's kind of cool in a sense that they that they could pull it off though. Like, I mean, they got to be pretty fucking good. Like props. Maybe to they were actors, dude. They're fucking practicing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, I had a role. They had some roles. That's too much fucking work, bro. You gonna get this American accent, and you gonna love me for it? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now we're gonna move on to. Questions about alcohol. What's your favorite cocktail? Okay. I, ooh, favorite cocktail. I'm going to say like an old fashioned. Like I like an old fashioned with some whiskey. Good whiskey where I can taste the liquor. Oh, gee. Austin. Triple O. I, I feel like we're on the same wavelength, man. Like a lot of the, you, a lot of the same answers. Yes, dude. When you come out to Columbia, hit me up. We'll grab a beer. That's lit. Yeah. We'll grab old some fashion. old fashions. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, where did you find your cheapest pint? Ooh, I know I don't order pints, but <laughs> is it such a non-American? <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got to be Colombia. Colombia was it's it's cheap, man. Everything's cheap. Yeah, I fucking love that about it so much. All right, where in the world is your favorite bar and why? Ooh. Oh, there's this. Okay, there's this hostel bar in Tulum, Mexico. It's called the Straw Hat Hostel. And on the rooftop, there's a bar there. 
and they get fucking crazy. Yeah, is that the one that has a pool There's up like there? A, yeah, 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 it's got the yeah. pool. You spin the wheel, <laughs> and like some of the things on the wheel are like jump in the pool naked, and people are doing it. You know, oh, like his his strangers, girls climb up on the bar and strip, and there's like a big wall of like best booty, best tits, <laughs> best this that, and it has their oh, Instagram shit. handles, and girls like compete for that, and it's just it's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. I went there in one night. It was it was pretty lit, but everybody was too fucking young for me because. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. right. Exactly. I, I have like one or two years left. left it, yeah, like, I can't be hanging around you guys anymore. Right. Exactly. What's your favorite thing to cook while traveling? Bro, I don't cook while I travel. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, uh, I order rappy every yeah. single meal. Like I will rappy because it's so cheap. Right. So and easy. I'm alone. And so it's like, yeah, maybe like a cereal max, but I, I just order out every single meal. Yeah, same here. Same here. Especially when it's so fucking cheap. It's like so easy to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get a full meal for like six bucks, seven bucks. Don't have to cook, do dishes. Right. Probably like, cost you more to fucking buy the stuff. Well, buy the- Yeah, you- and bring it like a time-wise too. Mm-hmm. Top five. Here are the five best things in Medellin. Coming in at number five, we're going to have social hostels. You meet a ton of travelers there. They have, usually you'll find people that speak English. Absolutely, actually, you'll find people that speak English. And it's a great way to meet your traveling friends. Number four is when you want to meet locals. And that's going to be the language exchanges. It's great because you can actually sit down at the table with the American flag above it and teach people English. And that's going to be Colombian locals who want to learn English and are interested. And you can really help them out. At the same time, learning about the culture and communities of Colombia. Yeah. And there's an American flag over. If you're a single guy, you can probably uh, <laughs> get to meet a few people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's a great way to meet girls. Uh, and number three would probably be, uh, my, my whole thing's probably centered around meeting girls. But yeah. Number three <laughs> would probably be like. <laughs> you are the digital bro man. Yeah, I mean, you got to live up. It's true. If you go to these, there's a special type of dance class, right? There's like the bachata classes and bachata is basically like the sexiest dance style you can learn. But there's classes where they separate the guys and the girls and they teach guys the one like the male routine of leading and teach the girls following. And then you get to dance with each girl like you just rotate and there's usually more girls than guys. And so it's a great way you learn a skill and you can go out and dance, which is great and have fun out in the country. And you get to like it's like speed dating, but not if you're you know dancing. I mean? It's just dancing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Two, um, I'm going to have to say out in Colombia, I love the fincas. And like if you get a group of your guy friends together for like 60, 80 bucks each, you can get a mansion. You can get a really? legit mansion or a finca, which is like a farm out here mm. close to the city. It's really, really cool. We've done it twice so far, and both times have been wild. What have you? It's a lot of. What fun. did you? Use, what um, service or whatever website did you use to find um, like fincas or the mansions and stuff that you've rented? Yeah, I would. Um, it was it was Airbnb. Airbnb has them. Okay. Airbnb's got them, but there's way cheaper options if you know some Colombian locals. Right. They can find. They can get in touch with the people. But we we just did Airbnb both times. Still really great right. prices. Okay, sick. And then my number one thing in Colombia is definitely just the people, the paisas. The paisas Paisa. are great. Guys and girls, women especially, but the people here are incredible. <laughs> They're super friendly, super nice. Um, you know, don't, I hate when people travel and they stay on the resorts and stuff like that. Like go and go meet and become friends with some Colombians. Mm-hmm. They'll teach you a lot and you'll have a lot of fun. Very good nice. list, brother. Uh, Brandon, Br- Brandon, I know that you've been to uh, Colombia as well. Is there is there any honorable mentions from your part? Did you like Communa 13? Uh, I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, it was an interesting thing to do and see. Um, but it wasn't like, I, it, it, it wasn't good enough for me to like mention it on a top five thing mm. to do. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um but definitely like doing something like a walking tour, which is across the board for any country or city that you go to, but doing a walking tour through Medellin to kind of like give a little bit more of the history was something that was high on my list of things that I enjoyed. 
Um, Cause then I'd also got to get like the history regarding like Pablo Escobar and, you know, what we were talking about earlier about how safe the country is and getting um, like a local's perspective on their, what they've been doing to, to reverse the, uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the, the image that the country and city has, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Listen guys, I'm going to be a bit selfish here. And I'm going to throw the attention to me. So my girlfriend and I are going to to, to Colombia together. I'm I'm sure you know meeting the you know the girls and all that would be great. But can you guys give me I guess a few things to do in Medellin with my girlfriend? Well, definitely that walking tour. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely Communa 13. That's a you know it's a staple that you can't really miss. Um, Doing a doing a salsa or bachata class together is an amazing thing to do as an as a yeah. couple, for sure. That's a good one. Yeah. I know some good restaurants, like date night restaurants, that are good. I got some too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you said no, no girls, but like, have you guys ever been to a strip club together? Or what is that? I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm legit. I'm legit not trying <laughs> yeah, to be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there, no. So I know that I know a strip club that is like. Very, very fun. It's like super professional. But Did they have a bring bring your girlfriend night or no? But I mean, I got I've heard of cu- of couples going to strip clubs together, and I mean that's just one of the things I did. I didn't do it with the with I did it solo, <laughs> but it was it was it was very affordable. That was the other thing. So you know, you might want to throw some some spiciness into your life for one night. <laughs> Feels right. like is it, fuck, a, is it La Isla? It's, yeah, it La Isla? is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, it's fun, that shit was man. super fun, fun. Super fun. <laughs> and the energy there is good too. Like the girls are are out having fun, like just trying to dance. And like it's not like a, it's more of like a party. Right, exactly. It wasn't like a predatory experience. You could like, yeah, I, I had a I had a good time, and it was like super affordable. So, and I, I'm legit saying that not to be funny, not to like, you know, I'm just. You know, you, Are you still being yeah, funny. Yeah, people do it. Right. The, I've taken a, a girl to a strip club before. Yeah. Feels like that you nah. met on Tinder or or like a girlfriend. <laughs> no, like a girlfriend. Yeah, girlfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> all right. He's like, yeah. Well, all right, I might need. I need. I, need, I might need more convincing. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Story time. So this is like my craziest Columbia story right here. And it, and it happened on my second day. So I, this is like how Columbia started for me. I arrived. Now, I love to set my Tinder location to where I'm going like a month in advance. Talk to people, get to know areas and stuff. So I had this date with this girl and we went to the club. And this was, she was really cute, petite Colombian girl. And we're looking at the club menu. And it's the first time I've seen Colombian club prices. So I heard I had to try this stuff called Aguadente, which is like this Colombian drink. And a bottle of it in the club, like a big ass bottle, was like twenty five bucks. So I told is her, this, "Is this like a is this like a liqueur or is this it's like a, a hard liquor. liqueur? Like, yeah, it's a okay. liqueur. Tastes like uh, um, black licorice. Okay, so it's yeah. like a sambuca ish yeah. drink. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And it goes down pretty smooth, and it, you don't realize it, but it'll fuck you up for sure. <laughs> 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 so we're. We, uh, I'm like, we're getting a bottle, you know, I'm showing off, like, she's cute, and I'm, I'm trying to be like baller guy, even though it was like 20. I'm like, we're getting a bottle, and she's about it too. She's like, Woo, get a bottle, I'm like, we're getting a bottle. <laughs> so, we're drinking this bottle, <laughs> and uh, we're having a good time. I'm feeling really tipsy, and I'm dancing. I turn over and I look, and me and the server see at the same time, her face is flat on the table like she's out like it, like her hair spread out like an octopus on the table oh, she is gone. oh my god and yeah. he starts telling me shit in spanish and i don't speak any spanish so i'm like yeah it's crazy Fuck. <laughs> and he disappears and uh, <laughs> this, this girl comes up she's like a manager we'll call her like sarah she speaks english with this really heavy accent she's like what the fuck is going on i'm like i i don't know she's like you guys have to go and i'm like okay probably for the best so we take her out front of this club, this place called a Chula. And uh, there's like a line to get in and a couch out front. So she's laying down. Now, the rest of the story is going to happen in like in front of an audience, oh, right? Because they're all waiting to get into the club. They're all watching me carry this drunk girl out, right? So Sarah's like, you guys have to go home. Now, 
I had just met this girl. I don't know where the fuck she lives. Oh, and oh. in Colombia, your houses have really heavy security. Mm -hmm. Like they, you need to give like girls, if you bring a girl over, she's got to give them their ID. They got to do this whole thing. So they are not letting me carry this drunk girl up into my room. Plus it's probably, I don't even want to do that. I don't want like the, who knows what's going no. on. what I mean? Right. So <clears throat> I'm like, I don't know this girl. And then Sarah's like, let's go through a purse. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and somebody's going through a purse in front of everyone. And uh, she finds this thing with an address on it, and uh, she's like, "Oh, look, this is where she lives. I called you an Uber. They're gonna, they're gonna, you know, take you there, and you're gonna drop her off." And I'm drunk, and I'm like, and everyone's looking, and it feels so weird. I don't know what to do. People are like yelling me at shit me in Spanish, and I'm like, okay. And so I'm carrying her past the crowd, the line, so you can expect that all the shit people are saying in Spanish. I don't even know. Putting her in this Uber, and then I realize I'm gonna get dropped off at some random Colombian neighborhood at night with this chick. And I'm gonna have to look, and I was just like, fuck that. Like, I'm not that drunk. I had this moment of clarity. <laughs> I bring her back down the line, past everyone, lay her back on the couch. Sarah's heated now. She's like, well, I thought you guys were fucking leaving. Like, we're killing the vibe. And I'm like, this is I'm the worst model shit. service ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's like, then I'm calling the cops. Oh, like, oh, oh shit. Gonna, and then I'm like, <laughs> call the cops like let's let's do it and so the colombian police show up and i don't speak and so we're handing my phone back and forth right in to so i can translate what what i'm saying and i they're like what happened to her and i say it was probably the shots right uh, and they put me in handcuffs <gasps> instantly oh, instantly no. and 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 my phone i can't get to my phone so i'm like what the fuck is going on why are they doing this and her and sarah having a conversation and i'm like just free, like, you know, and now everyone's looking. I'm in handcuffs now. Like, the story's unfolding in front of the line. And I realize that it's – the translation is off because a shot is like a, like a vaccine shot or like an oh, injection. Oh, <laughs> So shit. they thought we were, like, mainlining fucking Aguarente or some shit. Oh, my God. So is that I'm how you do it? I'm in trouble with the police. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm just trying to, like, enjoy the customs of the country. But – Fuck okay, yeah! So I was like freaking out. Like it's funny now, but I was fucking like I was alone. I travel alone too, so I'm like, bye. I'm like, I'm going to fucking Colombian prison. Dude, I knew second night. my mom was right. I shouldn't have came here. <laughs> first, first time in handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First time in handcuffs. Oh, fuck. And uh, uh, so I'm I'm worried. And the cops they have the better idea where they use her phone and they unlock her her phone with her face. And, and they, they call like, her mom. Open, they open, open her eyes. Like, <laughs> yeah, and they and they they get a hold of her her mom and have her mom come to the club. Oh shit! And her mom what? and dad show up in their fucking pajamas. Oh my god! She's passed out. She threw up, and then, so they have to watch this whole. Then now the crowd's like invested. Right. Like I'm sure some have already gone in, but they're like they don't oh, even want to go in anymore. Right. <laughs> this is the entertainment out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so her mom's shit. trying to wake her up, and I'll never forget. Allie was like, "Don't, don't, don't call my mom. Whatever you do, don't." I'm like, "That is your mom oh, right now." No. <laughs> and so they pick her up, they carry her away. I even shake the, her dead mom and dad's hand. Is that then? I then we figured it out. I was outside of the handcuffs, and they actually like, "Thank you for keeping her safe. my daughter yeah, safe." Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I stayed. I didn't just take an Uber and leave her in the club. Right. But, and, uh, and that kid's that's how I met your mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny. And then the police leave and she leaves and the crowd's all crazy. And then I look at Sarah and I'm like, I still have like half a bottle of aguadente. And she's like, get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're like, hey, so Sarah, what's popping? How you doing? What's up? <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, she's like, bottle. you're not allowed back in. No, I was asking if I could just go back inside for my bottle. Right. She was like, fuck no. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, that would have been funny, yeah. <laughs> so so this uh, was your second day in Colombia? Second day. Second Jesus day. Jesus Christ, and you're still there, man. What a fucking trooper. <laughs> I had the month-long Airbnb, so I wrote it out, and I'm glad I did. Right. I'm glad I did. And me and that girl are still friends. I was going to ask, have you so. still talked Have you talked to her after that incident? Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. We still talk. Um, she's still super cool. Right. She was, you know, when I tell the story, people are like, "How old was she?" She's twenty seven. Oh my she's god, she's twenty seven and a lawyer. I for sure thought so, she was like uh, twenty one or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, man. So, so the next time you guys went out, did she get the bottle of Aguadente? Or 
She won't drink. Yeah, now she like hardly, hardly drinks. She's like, I'm we do go only out. on water and coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a sick story, dude. That's a that's a, a great introduction to Colombia, bro. <laughs> Stay away from yeah, the aguadente. Noted. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Aguadente is they fucking you a horrible. I hate that alcohol so much. It tastes so bad. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like it either. Yeah. But it's like Colombians are so about right. it. Like they're so proud of their aguadente. Right. You gotta try it. Yeah, definitely but buy a bottle. Don't like liquor, but don't. Don't like you. You won't need to drink it after you buy it that first time. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll stay away. <laughs> so, Austin, thank you so much for coming on. You were an awesome guest, and I hope that you know your 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 digital nomad days or bro mad days continue so that we can get more stories because you're a great guest. So, so I guess on the subject of that, what is the next? What are the next steps for you? Are you sticking around in Colombia or what's going on? Oh man, I'm so excited! I am going to Asia. And I'm going to do a what? whole like Korea, Sick. Indonesia, like I'm doing the whole digital bromad content in Asia. Fucking so I'm really right. curious to see the differences. That's going to be a huge culture shock, but like I'm excited. It's going to be great. How, how is that going to be for you from for work? Like, is there like, you know what I mean? Just with the time difference? Yeah, it's going to be rough, but I've talked to my managers and uh, like they at first were nervous about me going to just Mexico which was my first stop. But I've just been consistently like, hey, my progress hasn't right. gone down. It's gone up. And like they just know I don't mind staying up until 4 a.m. twice a week. I only have two meetings that I really need to make twice a week. So I'll, I'll make it work. I'll do what I, whatever I have to do to make this work. So I want to go. Awesome. You're an inspiration, brother. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Austin, remind the people where they can find you or, and follow your content. Yeah, you could follow me at the Digital Bromad on TikTok. Just Digital Bromad and on Instagram, The Digital Bromad. Sick, man. With underscores yeah. in between. The underscore digital underscore Bromad. Pen and paper, people. Write it down because it it's good content. Especially if you're single. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so I, like my, the majority of my followers are all single guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, anyways, buddy, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Thank Austin. you so much for having me, guys. I had a lot of fun. This is a good cast. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to Two Beers Till Takeoff. Do you want free additional content or just to stay connected with the show? Then give us a follow on our social media platform. That means TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Are you in need of podcast production services, video editing, or anything in between? Then look no further than Strut Sound Production, the official producer of the Two Beers Till Takeoff podcast. Music produced by Alex Gagne. Check out his work in our show notes. Voiceover done by Viking Leo K. See you next week on Two Beers Till Takeoff. Thank you.